Hey guys, today I, uh, I'm going to take a look at a product that I had sent to me uh, from King Outfitters. Now I've stopped doing pretty much reviews from people sending me stuff just because it's super time consuming and some of the companies will start to kind of message you if you hadn't made it out and uh, made the video within let's say a month or so. And I'm the type of person that likes to get a product and at least hang on to it for a few months before I look at it. Uh, at this moment right now, I've only had this thing for about a week or two. and uh, But I have a similar product made by Eno. It's their Eno Bug Net. And so they had happened to actually look at that video and they contacted me, they emailed me, um, and asked me if I would do a review on this uh, bug net and said that it could be basically an unbiased review. They weren't necessarily looking for positive or negative. And most companies don't say they want a positive review out of the deal. Um, they just kind of leave that blank and you interpret it that way. But this company basically just really wanted uh, my opinion on it and had previously watched my video and got to talking to them. They're just a small company out of New York, so that was kind of a neat deal. At least the company's from here, and you can kind of understand that. So, it's pretty similar, but one huge difference that I can already see that the Eno really was struggled on, the Eno bug net struggled on, was the length of it. Uh, the Eno bug net on this Eno hammock, usually at the ends down here, at the ends of the hammock, was too short. Once I laid in the hammock, and the hammock kind of stretched out some, uh, it started to pull past the actual hammock end. And the hammocks, even on this one, they have a nice uh, scrunchy spot on the end that you can pull tight. And that draws it real tight around the end of the hammock. Well, once you got into the Eno hammock, that just widened back up and created a hole for whatever insects you wanted to get in there. And this one is not gonna have that problem. It's quite large. I wish I had a tape measure on me. All right, so tape measure goes on. Now this is without anybody stretching it. We are 128 inches. So it's 128 inches or 10 foot eight. Now let's go ahead and put on the Eno bug net and compare the lengths. I'm going to go ahead and cinch up the ends, kind of pull it the ridge part tight, and this is where I start to find comparisons between the two nets different. Now the Eno is a great bug net. Um, I have found just a few flaws with it over the period of time that I have used it. Here's one of them. We're only eight foot seven inches. It's a pretty big difference. Really, really big difference. So, uh, so that makes that 102 inches long. And you can obviously see the material difference uh, could be a big deal. Now I do carry a ridge line on this hammock. Here in just a second, I'm gonna show you what happens when you don't have a ridge line on this hammock. Like a lot of people do not. If you've been in hammocks long enough, you will. But most of the people that purchase in this, you know, do not have a ridge line on there. Um, I've found over time of sitting in this hammock with this bug net on here that the stretch will cause this end here to open up and usually exposes about three or so inches on each end of the hammock. Now in doing so, that opens up this little hole here. And I have had some mornings where I've woken up and I've had a few mosquitoes inside the net. Now I don't know, I can't say for sure that that was actually because of the hole in the end here or I let them in through the actual bug net. 
So I'm going to go ahead and take off this ridge line, this structural ridge line, and give you an idea of what it looks like when you stretch the hammock out like a lot of people do. All right, so now as you can see, this whole setup looks a little lopsided. The hammock is stretched out like a lot of people like it. I'm going to go ahead and tighten it up. This is starting to look a lot more like a classic hammock setup. Well, it's a little high right now because of the way I had it put on the tree. But let's go ahead and do that scenario again. Now I'm going to go ahead and pull the actual Eno bug net over top of this and you'll see how short it really is at that point. Okay, so this Eno bug net is attached fully at the other end. It's crunched down and it's touching. So now we have nearly a foot of the hammock exposed at the end. And doing this, when you lay in this, it completely opens up this end. It doesn't work. I'm going to remove this one and then we're going to go ahead and put on the King Outfitter one. I love this is simple. Boom. And this is where it kind of shines. Now if you're the type of person that likes to stretch your hammock out without a ridge line, this actually covers the entire hammock. And as a matter of fact, it doesn't just cover the entire hammock. You have an extra, that's eight inches. This on me is about eight to nine inches long. So there's eight inches there. And we have about the same amount on this end. So we're covering this hammock completely fully. And I can assure you when you lay in this, that it's not going to stretch over top of the hammock because of the length, at least in an Eno uh, you know, double nest. So. Some things to note, it came with this rope right here. It's actually two lengths. Um, I'm not sure exactly what the intended use was for that other than I, I, I know it should have been used to hang the top of the hammock. It's got these plastic clasps. We'll take a look at that here in just a second. And so I just tied them two together um, and just pulled it tight. I'm hanging it on that. Usually when I'm doing something like this, I just let it rest on the actual ridge line of the hammock just so I don't have to carry the extra rope and put it on there. Um, unless I'm going to go ahead and put a rain fly over it uh, and then I just would hang it on the ridge line of the actual rain fly. Let's go take a look. So these are the plastic clips I was talking about. They're quite large so you're not going to have any problem hooking it onto the cordage so you can use a little larger cordage if you wanted to than what they got here such as paracord, uh, probably even larger. So just went ahead and hung it up there uh, these are the crunchy ends I was talking about, so you can just squeeze these, boom, and it opens up, or you can just pull it tight over the end. Now I've pulled this a little bit lo larger or wider over top of the actual um, will be sling drops for just so you could see how far it stretched out. It doesn't need to do that. Um, I can take it all the way down to the end. Now the problem I had with the Eno, I can kind of show you here, let's push this back. The problem I had with the Eno was it always got down to the end here. And this is exactly how I woke up in the morning, um, even wider actually. So this would be about that wide open on the Eno bug net by the time I laid in it. It would pull over top of the end of the hammock and stretch it open which was kind of a bummer. Um, there were a few nights that I had laid in it that mosquitoes had gotten in there and I'm not sure exactly if they actually came through this hole or if I had inadvertently let them in through the actual zipper. But with this hammock or this bug net for this hammock and I'm sure many more 
and that's not going to be a problem. All right, so this is a lot like the Eno bug net as far as entering it. It just has a two-way zipper, so this zipper can come down. Um, this one can come up, and this one can, or the bottom zipper can come up if you want to meet in the middle for getting in and out. Uh, so that part's very, very similar. Nice wide opening. Usually when I got in my hammock, I just open it up like such and sat in it. So I'm going to show you how this hammock can easily just be set off to the side if you'd like. Uh, just have to clear out all your gear in your hammock. Go to, probably would go ahead and take some of these top rungs off. Personally, I'm sure you don't have to. And then come down to the end. Open up the end. And just start sliding it back. There's plenty of material here. Pulls right out. So then you can access your hammock back to the way it originally was. And just set that off to the side uh, for some open air during the middle of the day kind of kind of deal. So if it's a little little warm. And it just makes it that easy to stick it back I'm on. I'm going to take this off for now. And I'll show you what I think is the easy way to get this back on. The way that works best is to grab the, get the end of the hole here, stick your hand in the, in through the actual hole, as long as you don't have monster fist. <laughs> so I have pretty big hands, honestly. But just stick your hand in through that hole, and then find the other end of the hole. such. Just grab it and pull through. found that a lot easier than trying to unzip it and then, you know, just kind of a mess that way. Stick that over top of my Marlin spike hitch and then just pull it over top of your old hammock. Like I said, you can get away with just letting it sit on top of your ridge line if you have one. If not, no problem. Just set up your upper ridge line for this and hang it. This might help lift it up off the ground while you're setting up. All right, let's take a look inside. Getting inside is simple enough. Just pop your feet in and zip it up. And now, you can see, you are completely surrounded by bug net. Very, very spacious. The holes are quite small. One thing about bug nets that most people don't take into consideration is uh, how much heat they actually do hold in. And they, they will hold in quite a bit of heat. Um, so it could also be in cooler weather an added benefit for you to stick it, go ahead and stick it on even if there isn't going to be any bugs. Um, it's kind of neat. To get the bug net like this to spread out it's best just to kind of lay it a diagonal and that helps keep the bug net away from your face in this direction. It will create um, the bug net to get right up against your head here, but the way I solve that problem usually when I'm sleeping is to go ahead and put the pillow or whatever I'm using for my head in this spot. And you're going to want to go ahead and do that because I can tell you from past experience with any kind of bug net like this, the mosquitoes will bites you through the side of the net and 
it sucks when you wake up and the side of your face has just got bite marks all over it. Um, that's happened to me a few times. And I'll show you what the foot box of this thing looks like with this much, with laying in a diagonal, how much more room it kind of creates. There you go. It's pretty nice. I really like this so far. Um, the true, true test for it will be in the dead of summer when the mosquitoes suck. <laughs> but until then, this will have to do. All right, guys, so there's a look at the uh, King Outfitters bug net. Uh, just a real quick look so you guys can get an idea of what it's like and how to kind of set it up. Now, one thing that I want to suggest maybe for King Outfitters is down here on this actual bag, which is really, really lovely to stuff this bug net in, and there's plenty of space for it to fit in here, is if they would take their actual image and put it on the other side of the bag so it's visible from the actual zipper side. Because this is what it looks like. Breakdown simple. Usually I grab the end of any of these, even my hammock is like this, and just start stuffing it into the box or the bag. Like I said, this bag is plenty, plenty big for all this to fit in there. As a matter of fact, I'm sure if you had something else you'd like to stuff in here, it'd fit too. So it has a real nice drawstring on it as well with a clasp closure. Like this. It's just like the other ones. You squeeze it to pull it down and it locks it in there. Pretty nice. Um, the other feature it has is a compression strap. And this strap is pretty heavy duty. It goes all the way around. Now out of truth, um, the way this buckle is, you pretty much got to tighten it down to where you'd want it before you actually click it in. There's no real way for it to be pulled tight after it's clicked in. And now you can kind of see how small it gets. Pretty small for what you're getting. I mean, it's a fairly nice size uh, bug net. Do need to weigh it just to kind of compare it to what I already have. Here's the weight comparison between the two. We're going to go ahead and do this in pounds and ounces. So this is the Guardian Bug Net from Eno. We're at 15.2 ounces. That's one pound 5.5 ounces. Now there is more material of course on the King Outfitters so it was definitely going to weigh more. But if you're curious, there it is. It's pretty nice. Thanks, King Outfitters, for letting me check this out. Really appreciate that. Until next time, I'll see you guys around. Have a good one.